Okay, in this video I'm going to find the equation of a degree 4 polynomial. We're given that the roots or zeros or solutions are x equals 1, x equals negative 3, and x equals 2 minus i. And we also know we're given that the, the uh, polynomial goes through the point negative 1 comma 6. So I've just quickly jotted down all that information. So let's call the polynomial f of x. And let's think about what we know already. So we know it's degree 4. So the idea in these, to, to go about these problems, when you're trying to find the equation, um, you're basically going to imagine, you're going to work backwards. Um, so for example, let's do a quick example. And again, this is maybe stuff you already know. Suppose you had the polynomial f of x equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. Well, that factors as x plus 2 and x plus 3. So in this case, the roots or the zeros, we set each factor equal to 0, and we would get the zeros of negative 2 and negative 3. So the idea is, if you know a, a root or a 0, you know that for the polynomial, when it factors, you know what one of the factors is going to look like. So notice that we have two sets of parentheses here, and it's a degree 2. Since our polynomial is degree 4, I'm going to use four sets of parentheses. Okay, so there's my four sets of parentheses, and you kind of take the, the opposite sign. So we know that there's a 0 or I'm going to just use root. We know there's a root of negative 2. We have a factor of x plus 2. Well, if one of the roots is x equals 1, that means we're going to have a factor of x minus 1. Likewise, if x equals negative 3 is a root or a 0, we're going to have a factor of x plus 3. Now, I should have given myself a little more room because I'm going to not be able to fit everything in here. So let me write it below here. Okay, we're told that x equals 2 minus i is a, a, a root. That means as a factor, we're going to have x minus the quantity 2 minus i. And, okay, so we've got one extra set of parentheses here, right? And I've only got, I'm only given three of the roots or three of the zeros. Well, remember there's this conjugate, uh, complex conjugate roots theorem. It basically says if you have a zero of the form a plus or minus bi, you're going you're gonna to have another zero. You'll have another zero. We leave the a and the bi alone, but we flip the sign. So the, the, if it was originally a plus in between, it's, it's going to turn into a minus. And originally, if it's a minus, it's going to turn into a plus. So in this case, we have 2 minus i. That was one of our roots. Well, again, we leave the 2 and the i alone. We just flip the sign. So in this case, we know that 2 plus i is going to be another 0. So sometimes they, you'll see problems like this. They'll give you one of the complex roots. And you just have to flip the sign to get the other. So I'm going to do x minus 2 plus i. Okay, so now the only thing I really haven't used is the fact that it goes through this point, negative 1, comma, 6. Well, that tells me if I plug negative 1 into my function, I have to get 6 out. Well, how do we account for that value? Well, what we do is um, we just put a generic number out here. We'll call it a. And the idea is we'll use this f of negative 1 equals 6 to solve for a. Okay? So having a coefficient out front isn't going to change any of those, those roots or zeros. Okay, so now the long-winded part. Now what we have to do is just multiply all of this stuff out and clean it up. So that's going to be kind of the, the long part here. And then last but not least, we'll use this fact that if we plug negative 1 in, we get 6 out. Okay, so bear with me now. It's just algebra. Um, I encourage you, if you want to, you can pause it and see if we get the same thing here. You can work it out yourself. Um, but of course, feel free to, to just watch the magic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply these first two terms together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the last two terms together as well. Okay, so x and x, that's x squared. We'll have a plus 3x minus x. That's going to be plus 2x. 
Negative 1 times positive 3 is going to be a negative 3. Okay, if we multiply, we're going to have x multiplied by x, which is going to be x squared. We're going to have a negative 2 plus i multiplied by x. And then we're going to have another negative um, 2 minus i. I should say not another, but we'll have a 2 minus i multiplied by x. Our negative and negative will make a positive. Then we'll have 2 minus i multiplied by 2 plus i. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and simplify this. So our, we're foiling here, so there's our first, uh, our first inner, outer, and then the last terms. So we've got 2 minus i that we have to multiply by 2 plus i. Well, 2 times 2 is going to give us 4. We'll have a positive 2i and a negative 2i. Those are going to cancel out. And then we'll have a negative i and a positive i. That's going to give us negative i squared. Okay, so I think this is probably the most tricky part. So let's talk about it again. So x multiplied by x gives us the x squared. x times the negative 2 plus i will give us, well, negative 2 plus i times x. Then we've got negative 2 minus i multiplied by x. So there's that term. And then our outside terms, okay, our negative and our negative made our positive here. And then I'm just distributing the 2 minus i and the 2 plus i together. So 2 times 2 is going to be 4. The, uh, the 2i and the negative 2i will cancel. And then we'll have our minus i squared. Whew, okay. So let's keep going here. Um, one thing I keep in mind, too, I've got all these imaginary numbers floating around. My polynomial, my final answer, once I multiply it together, there should be no i's left over. There should be no imaginary numbers floating around. If so, I know that I've done something wrong. Okay, so we have x squared plus 2x minus 3. Okay, we've got x squared. We're going to have a minus 2x. We'll have a minus 2ix. And then let's see, we're going to have another minus 2x. When we distribute, we'll have a positive i. Um, times x. I think I screwed up over here, excuse me. Um, we've got negative x times 2, so that's negative 2x. Then we'll have negative x times i. So, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Um, we shouldn't have that coefficient there. So negative i times x. And I, the way I recognize that is actually um, the comment I just said. So I notice I get negative 2 times x. Here I'm going to get positive i times x. And what I just said a second ago, I said, you know, if you're left with i's left over, you've done something wrong. Well, if I had a negative 2ix and a positive i times x, I would still have a, a, a minus ix left over, which tells me that I've done the arithmetic wrong. So um, maybe it's worth keeping this little mistake in here, and I'm just going to keep going. So um, it's good to have little things like that will help you kind of little tricks to help you keep from making these arithmetic mistakes. Okay, so we've got plus 4, we've got minus. Recall that negative i squared, negative i squared is going to be the same thing as positive 1 because i squared is just negative 1. So, okay, so let's combine those. So I'm going to keep simplifying. I know this is a long video. That's why I encourage you to practice maybe on your own and then just you know, skip to the end. So let's see. Okay, we've got negative 2x, negative 2x, that's negative 4x. Just like we said a second ago, our negative ix and positive ix are going to cancel out, so there's no i's left over. And then we have plus 4, plus 1, that's going to give us plus 5. All right, well, guess what we get to do again? We get to do more distributing. Okay, so now I'm going to start off by multiplying the x squared to every term. All right, so x squared times x squared is going to be x to the fourth. We'll have a minus 4x to the third plus 5x squared. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the positive 2x. I'm going to distribute that one to everybody in my second set of brackets here. So it looks like we'll have a positive 2x to the third. We'll have a negative 8x squared. And then positive 2x and positive 5 will be positive 10x. So last but not least, I'm going to now take my negative 3 and distribute that to all the terms. 
So we'll have a minus 3x squared. We'll have a positive 12x. And then we're going to be left with negative 15. All right, so we're getting close. Let's collect like terms. I've got x to the fourth. See, I've got negative 4x to the third plus a 2x to the third. That's going to be minus 2x to the third. Um, I've got 5x squared minus 8x squared. That's going to be a negative 3x squared minus another 3x squared will be negative 6x squared. I've got positive 10x and positive 12x. That's going to give us positive 22x minus 15. Almost done. Got a nice fourth degree polynomial. The only thing we don't have is the, the coefficient, the value for a. Well, this again is where I'm going to use that information. So again, this is my function f of x. So it says if we plug negative 1 in, we get 6 out. So again, this is the x value. This is going to be the y value. Might as well scoot over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 6 on the left side. And I'm going to replace the x with um, negative 1. So we would have negative 1 raised to the fourth power minus 2 times negative 1 raised to the third power minus 6 times negative 1 squared. We'll have 22 times negative 1 minus 15. Okay, if we simplify, we've got 1. Let's see, so negative 1 to the third is going to be a negative 1 times negative 2 will be positive 2. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times negative 6 will be negative 6. We'll have a negative 22 minus 15. All right, so let's see. Um, 1 plus 2 is 3. We've got negative 6 minus 22. That's negative 28 minus 15. Negative 28 minus 15 will be negative 43. 3 minus 43 is going to be negative 40. So let's divide both sides here by negative 40. Well, those are both even, so we can divide. I just move the negative to the top. It's just a, how I typically write them. So negative 6 over 40 will reduce to negative 3 over 20. That won't reduce any further. We now have our solution. So our polynomial will be f of x equals negative 3 over 20 multiplied by this polynomial we found a second ago. x to the fourth minus 2x to the third minus 6x squared plus 22x minus 15. And if you want to, I am not going to. Um, if you want to, you can certainly distribute some more if you don't want to see um, this, this value factored out front. If you want to, knock yourself out. Um, but I think I'm going to call it quits on this one. So again, the only thing that's really different about these when you have complex numbers, the only thing that's different is you just have to remember this, this conjugate um, zero pair. And then the other thing, after that, it's just that the, the arithmetic is, is a lot worse. That's all there is to it. So you saw me. I even made a little mistake. So it happens. Just take your time. Be careful. Um, and other than that, it's just a lot of arithmetic. So all right. Um, somebody had requested this video. So I hope it helps. And I hope it makes sense. And good luck.